in this week's parsha, parsha Tre'e, we're going to be pretty much discussing. It's a big debate now in America. You would maybe hear about it. Some pe some people say, should you tip? How much should you tip? Should you teach every person? When do you tip? When you don't tip? So we're going to look a little bit what's the total view about tipping. Just before we even start, we're not going to be discussing it, but there is such a concept of slavery from the Torah. It's not the same slavery as over here in America, completely different. Just to have some perspective, a Jewish slave pretty much lives like a king. Everything that the master has, if he wants to upgrade, he needs to upgrade his slave first, and then he's only up, allowed to upgrade himself. And even a non-Jewish slave in Jewish tradition, in the Jewish law, is actually almost a Jew. In other words, he's required to do all the commandments that doesn't have to do with time, just like a woman. And, uh, and he has some rights. For example, if his master decides to, if the slave and the master live in Israel, and the master decides to go from Israel to another, to another place, and the slave wants to stay in Israel, the master is required to free him, and then he becomes, at that moment, a full Jew, at that moment. So slavery has got nothing to do with the slavery in America. It's a different kind of slavery completely. So let's start at source number one. It says, Ki macher lecha achicha ivri o ivriya, if your brother, the Hebrew, or the maidservant who is a Jew, ve'avdecha shesh shanim, and they serve you six years, we're talking about Jewish slave that serves his master for six years, there's a reason um, usually the reason why a person is sold into slavery is because he stole something and he's not able to pay it back. So his time in slavery is the repayment. But it says, when the seventh year comes around, it says you have to send him free from within you. And when you do send him free, you're not allowed to send him Empty-handed, you have to give to him from your sheep, from your grain, and from your uh, wine. Specifically, these three things, because we were slaves in Egypt, and the holiday of Pesach is the holiday that we received our freedom. And in the holiday of Pesach, there's um, three um, commandments, we have to eat the Korban Pesach, this is Metzoncha, Migornecha, we have to eat Matzah, this is the wheat from the Goren, Umiyekvecha, and we have to eat, drink four cups of wine. So since the Jews had freedom, this is how they symbolize the freedom, also this is what you have to specifically give it from those specific three things. From all Asher Berechacha, Hashem Elokecha, Titenlo, whatever God blessed you, you should give to him. You should remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and God redeemed you. Therefore, I commend this thing upon you today. Let's look at source number two. You should remember that you were a slave in Egypt. Just like you were a slave in Egypt. And I gave you, uh, I gift, I gave gifts to you, and I re-gifted to you. So just like you, when you got your freedom, you got a gift, and then you got another gift. So you should give the gifts to a slave that was within you. Just like in Egypt, I gave you with a white hand. Also, you should give to him with a wide hand. And this is what it says, if you lie between the borders, the feathers of a dove covered with silver, what does that refer to? This is the, when we took the things from the Egyptians, when every man and every woman borrowed gold and silver from the Egyptian. And then it says, and its pinion with brilliant gold. This is after the Egyptians were 
uh, killed by in the Red Sea, all the gold and the silver um, floated up to the beach, and then the Jewish people collected that. זו ביזת הים, to raise the hav נעשה לך זו ביזת הים, אם לקלוט כסף זו ביזת מצרים. So again, God gave to us twice, once when we left Egypt, and then again when the Egyptian, Egyptians drowned. From here we see there's a source in Maimonides, in Mishneh Torah, source number three. It says, כל המשלח אבדור ואמתו, anybody who sent his servant or his maid servant, they come, he sent them empty-handed, over belo ta'ase. He transgresses a negative commandment. Shneemar, because it says when you, somebody did work for you and you enjoyed his work as a slave, lo te'shalchen nurekam. It says you're allowed to send him empty-handed. Ha'anek ta'anik lo. It says you should give to him. Echad ha'yotze besof shesh. It says whether he worked for you for the entire six years, o she'yatza be'yovel, or whether he, there was the jubilee year that we also freed the slave. Or במיטת האדון, or the master passed away. Again, when the master passed away, you have to send him free. הרי אלו מעניקים להם. When you send them free, you can't just send them free with nothing. You have to send them free with a substantial gift. וכמה נותן לו? So the question is on page number four, and how much should you give to him? So it says, אין פחות משווה שלושים סלע בין מין, ממין אחד בין ממין הרבה. So it says you have to give him the value of 30 silver. Sorry, of 30 sela. Ben she nitbech habayt beglalo, ben she lo nitbech. And that doesn't matter if he was a good worker or he was an awful worker. Because of him you might have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. It doesn't matter, the Rambam says. You still have to pay him. At least the minimum amount is 30 sela. שנאמר הענק תעניק לו מכל מקום, because that's why it says a double, you should surely give to him. Of course you should give to him when he made you a lot of money, but how much, even if he didn't make you money, even if because of him you lost money, even then, in that circumstances, you should still give to him. אם כן, למה נאמר אשר ברכך? So therefore, why does it say, in all that he blessed you? So it says, according to the blessings. So for example, if the guy made you a million dollars, you give him a big amount. If he made you only a hundred dollars, you give him a smaller amount. That's the idea in Asher Berachacha. So let's look what, where did, um, this Chaf Av was this week, the yard site of the Rebbe's father, Reb Levi Yitzchak, and uh, the Reb Levi Yitzchak explains this in source number four. I believe it like says, Vehinu Yosef Shaya Metchila Eved Ivri. It says, how do we learn it? Look at Yosef. He was what? In the beginning, he was a Hebrew servant. K'mo shekatu v'sham itanu nar ivdi eved. And just like it says over there, when we, Yosef is described, it says, when he was in jail, he was described as, over there with us, there was a servant Jewish boy. Hine k'sheyatza lo chofshi v'lechavut, zich atek lo anaka. So when he became free, God needed to give him a, a present. Why? Because he's required to by Jewish law almost. So God made sure that Yosef, because he was a slave and sent free, he was going to get a present. What was the present that Yosef got? So it says, let's see, source number five. Vayasar poro, paro et abato mal yado, and paro removed his ring from on his hand. ויתן אותה על יוסף, and he gave the ring to Yosef. ויילבש אותו בגדי שש, and he dressed him with um, clothing of uh, linen, וישם רביד הזהב על צווארו, and he put the a golden chain around his neck. By the way, a, a golden chain in Hebrew is also called anak, and anak is also called anaka. Anaka means from the word gift. להעניק, to gift. He gave him a gift of a golden chain. וירכב אותו במרכבת המשנה אשר לו, and then he put him in his chariot, in the secondary chariot, ויקרא לפניו אברך, and he called the friend of him um, the king's patron, ונתן אותו על כל ארץ מצרים, and he put him in charge of the entire land of Egypt. So source number 4b, the, from Reb Lebek Yitzchak, he says, and what is this gift that he gave to him? 
מלבד זה, מה שנתן לו פרעה, הטבעת ורביד הזהב, besides the ring and the golden chain, ובגדי שש and the linen clothing, והרכיבו במרכבת המשנה, and he put him in the second chariot, ועוד, ככתוב פרשת מקץ, like everything is written in the parashat of מקץ, הנה עיקר ההנקה הוא מה שנתן לו הקדוש ברוך הוא, the main part of the gift is what God gave to him, what was the real gift, that was the physical gift, but there was a real gift over there, what was the real gift, והוא מה ששלח את גבריאל, God sent the angel Gabriel, ולימדו עין לשון, and he taught him 70 languages, ולא הווה גמר, but Yosef's brain couldn't handle it. He couldn't learn all these 70 languages, he couldn't hold it. הוא לא הצליח לקלוט היטב את השפות. He wasn't able to really acquire all these languages. So what did he do? What did God do? Or the angel Gabriel do? הוסיף לו אות אחת משמו של הקדוש ברוך הוא. He added one name from God's name. One letter from God's name. שנאמר עדות ביהוסף. Because it says testimony in Yehosef, they added a hey to Yosef's name. Samu chuluk de ita besota, daf lan bev, amud bat. So if you want to see where it is, in the Kohen Gadol, on the Choshen, Yosef was written over there with a hey, with an extra hey. Let's look to number five. Amar Rabbi Chia Baraba, Amar Rabbi Chionana, so Rabbi Chia Baraba said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, בשעה שאמר לו פרעה ליוסף, at the time that פרעה said to יוסף, ובלעדיך לא ירים איש את ידו ואת רגלו בכל ארץ מצרים. He says, without you, a man will not be able to lift his hand or lift his leg in the land of Egypt. By the way, what's the simple explanation? It says, if you want to control a country, it says, how do you control a country? You control a country, but controlling the arms, second amendment, and controlling freedom of movement. When it says, we do not lift a hand, we do not lift a hand to arm himself without Yosef's permission, and we do not lift a leg, he's not allowed to move from one, space, from one place to another place without Yosef's permission. Over here we learn that in order to control the population, you need to control the arms of the people, you have to take away the arms, and you have to take to them freedom of movement. That's what we learn from this thing right over here. This is how Yosef controlled the population of Egypt. So at that time, Amru, it's Daganali Paro. So at that time, all the Pharaoh's astrologers were confused. They said to Pharaoh, you give him such power to run the entire land? What? What's so special about this boy? It says, look, this is a slave that you know what we paid? That the, the guy paid for him 20 silver. And you treat him as the what? As the ruler of Egypt? What's going on with him? אמר להם, so פרעה told them, גינוני מלכות אני רואה בו. I see, I see something special in him. He has something that, I, that only kings have. שאינו עבד מעיקרו. I see that he is not really a slave. That's what he said. אמרו לו, אם כן, so the astrologers told פרעה, is that so? If this is so, שבן מלכים הוא, according to you, is the son of kings. יהיה יודע בשבעים לשון כדרך שלומדים בני המלכים. Let's see if he knows 70 languages just like the prince of the empire knows the 70 languages. בא מלאך גבריאל ולימדו שבעים לשון. Came the angel Gabriel there and taught him 70 languages. לא היה לומד כל זה, but he wasn't able to understand, to grasp all the languages באותה שעה. הוסיף לו גבריאל אות אחת משמו של הקדוש ברוך הוא. So what did Gabriel was supposed to do? He added one letter from the name of God, ואז למד שנאמר, and then it says, because it says, עדות בי הוסף שמו בצאתו על ארץ מצרים, שפת לא ידעתי אשמה. They added a hey, and then he learned all the languages. ולמחר כשחזר לפני פרעה, and the next day when he returned by פרעה, כל שפה שדיבר פרעה איתו ענה לו. פרעה started to talk to him. in Spanish, and he answered him in Spanish. So I talked to him in Chinese, and he answered him in Chinese, and so on and so forth. Paro knew 70 languages, and also Yosef. You're going to ask me a question now. Hey, that's not fair. Who is the one that sent him free? It wasn't Paro who sent him free. It was the guy who bought him for 20 silver. Who is the guy who bought him for 20 silver? Potipar. So he should give him the anaka. Not God. What's going on over here? 
ואל תקשה הרי ההנקה צריך להיות מה האדון שהיה עבד לו. It says, who has to give the gift? The master of the servant. ואם כן, היה צריך להיות ההנקה מפוטיפר שהיה אדונו. So the gift had to be from פוטיפר, because פוטיפר was his master. יש לומר מפוטיפר היה גם כן ההנקה. You have to know that also פוטיפר gave him a gift. What was the gift that פוטיפר gave him? והוא מה שנתן, ניתן לו ביתו אסנת. He gave him the greatest gift that there can be. He gave him his own daughter for a wife. פוטיפר's daughter was not. כמו שכתוב, like it's written, ויתן לו את אסנת בת פוטיפרה. And he gave to him אסנת, the daughter of פוטיפרה. סוס נאמר 7, ויתן לו את אסנת בת פוטיפרה, הכהן און לאישה, ויצא יוסף אל ארץ מצרים. So after he married אסנת, he went and governed over the entire land of Egypt. Now the Rebbe says, comes with the question. When a slave worked for you, for a, a while, whatever, a person worked for you, did a job for you, it says, what exactly, why do you give him severance pay? Why do you have to give him a gift? Where does that logic come from? So the Rebbe asked the question. ישנם שני אופנים שבהם ניתן להסביר את מהותו של ההנקה. There's two ways in which you can understand the mitzvah of severance pay, the mitzvah of gifting, not just for the wages, for the gifting. Number one, ההנקה היא בגדר שכר פעולה. The first way of understanding, you know what's the gift? It's for the good work that you did. לפי הגדרה זו, according to this explanation, מסתבר שהחידוש וגזירת הכתוב הוא, so according to this, what's the, the Torah instituting a law? מתן ההנקה בתורת שכר פעולה. So it says, besides what the guy did for you, you have to give him another reward. נוסף על כל השכר שם תמורת כל עבודתו. You have to give him 10% more, whatever. You have to give him a gift after he did his job. But it's part of the payment. In other words, it's connected to the payment. And the second opinion is, no, it has got nothing to do with for the payment. Ha'anakahi begeder tzedakah. The second opinion, it's charity. You don't, you're not required to give him for any payment. He didn't give you. Your deal is done with him. You can just send him free. Because that was the deal. He worked for you for, this, for, this, for a year for $100,000. So after a year, he got his $100,000, and that, that's it. Why do you need to give him extra? So it says the extra has got nothing to do with his wages. It's something which is charitable. Shadon noten ke arachal lo ato ved. He says he's tipping him. He says you did a good job. Here's a tip. Lefi agdara zo mechayev ha'egayon shanakai milta betam akamu. According to this explanation, then it is a logical requirement. What does it mean? Hashichgur, according to the first opinion, It doesn't make sense. Why should you pay him? The deal was $100,000. He worked for one year for $100,000. Okay, you got your $100,000. Go away now. I don't need to. According to the second opinion, it's charity. And then it makes sense. It says, why? Hashichvur mushlam kasher enu yotze bayadayim rikot. It says, really going free for a slave is when he, does, when he is, has something in his hand. If he comes out of the deal with nothing in his hand, that's not true freedom. אלא הוא מקבל מתנה מיוחדת, but he received a special gift, שמביאה אותו למצב של חירות. That special gift makes him free. רוחב יד וכדומה, ההפך מעבדות. He doesn't become a slave. If a person was a slave for, I don't know, even for six months, and then you set him free and he's got nothing? There's no freedom here. What's the freedom? You need to give him something from here to really be free. So the question, according to the Rebbe, מהי דעתו של הרמב״ם בנידון? How does the Rambam hold in this situation? דבר זה ניתן ללמוד מכך שבספר המצוות, we can learn this from the fact that in the book of מצוות, אין קובע הרמב״ם את מצוות ההנקה בין המצוות הקשורות לעבד ועמה. When the Rambam is talking about slavery, he doesn't even discuss over there the tipping. We're on page seven in the, on the top. He doesn't even discuss the tipping. Because it says it has nothing to do with payment for the slave. That's not the point. What's the point? 
כי היא מיד לאחר מצוות הצדקה. He discusses it when, after he discusses the commandment of charity. מן הסמיכות למצוות צדקה. It's from the fact that he discusses this uh, extra gift, connecting it close to the mitzvah of tzedakah, משמע כי לפי דעת הרמב״ם ההנקה היא בגדר צדקה. So according to the Rambam, the gift, the severed gift, is a form of charity. So let's look at this in the Rambam itself, this positive mitzvah 195. So Rambam says, God commanded us to be charitable. To strengthen the weak people. To open up for them. So it says, it comes out, that even if you're a poor person, and you take charity from others in order to survive, you still are required to do what? To give charity. So if you receive a hundred dollars for food stamps, you should take a little bit of that money and help somebody else with it. You have to be charitable to someone who has less than you. Even if he's similar to you, even in something, you have a commandment to help him. Let's look at positive mitzvah 196. He says, this is the commandment when a Jewish slave goes out to freedom. You cannot send him empty-handed. And this is, you should gift, you should give gifts to him. In other words, the reason Mitzvah 196 is following Mitzvah 195 that has to do with charity to tell you that it's got nothing to do with the wages. It is specifically there to teach you that the whole idea over here, this is charity. And let's look at positive mitzvah 197. He commanded us to give a loan to a poor person. So that he's not going to be so poor. He's going to be able to live in a little bit of comfort. This is the most, the, the best way to do, be generous. ויותר מחויבת מכל מצוות תקן. It is better than all other charitable acts, because you give it to him with his honor. You say to him, here's uh, 500 dollars, it's a loan, go do your business, and the guy is able to make a business and earn a living, and he feels like he's also a contributing member of society, and then he gives you the, the money back, slowly, slowly. The Rebbe says on page number seven, all the way in the bottom, ויש לומר שהסדר ברמב״ם הוא כהסדר בתורה. And we have to say that look at the Rambam. The mitzvah of 195, 196 and 197 are exactly the same way they are in the Torah. ששמח מצוות ההנקה למצוות צדקה. That the mitzvah for giving gifts to the slave is next to the mitzvah of charity. ובזה עצמו נלמד שההנקה היא גדר של צדקה. And from here we learn that the gifts to the poor is in itself considered to be charity. Page number eight. Let's look at source number 10. What's the definition? What's the obligation of charity? If there's going to be amongst you a poor person in any one of your places that God is giving you, you shouldn't harden your heart and you shouldn't unopen your hand from your poor brother. What should you do? You should open up your hand to your poor brother and lend him sufficient money for his needs that he is lacking. Or, and then it continues in after the charity, after the commandment of charity, in the Torah itself, it continues in the next verse. And it says, Ki imakir lecha achicha ivri o ivri yav avdecha sheshanim, if your brother or your sister were sold to you for six years, u bashana shvi yit shechenu chufshi mimach, in the seventh year you will send him free, vechi tishelchenu chufshi mimach, lot shechenu rekamen, you send him, it shouldn't be empty handed. 
הענק תעניק לו, you should give to him, מצונך ומגונך ומיוקביך, אשר בך השם יקריך, in, in all the things that God blessed you in, you should give to him. Page number nine, source eleven, this is from Sefer HaChinuch, Mitzvah 482, let's see what we can learn from these two hour days, what is required to us when it comes to tipping and similar things when it comes to this day and age. So, Sefer HaChinuch says like this, להעניק לו בצאתו לחפשי, it says you should give to him when he goes out free. לתת ממה שיש לנו, you have to give to him from something that we have. לעבד עברי, בזמן שיצא מתחת ידי לחירות. When he goes free, you have to give us something extra. ולא נשלחנו בידיים רקניות. We should not ever send him empty handed. ועל זה נאמר, הענק תעניק לו. On this it says, you should surely give to him. From where? From מצונך, מגרונך ומיקבך, אשר בך השם אלוקיך. תיתן לו. It says, from all the good things that you have, you should give to him. משרשי המצווה, from the roots of this mitzvah, למען נקנה בנפשנו מידות מעולות יקרות וחמודות. It says we have to acquire for us good attributes, ואם הנפש היקרה והמעולה נזכה לטוב, and with this good attributes we're going to merit some good. והאל הטוב חפץ להיטיב לעמו. God wanted the Jewish people to live in goodness, in comfort. והודינו והדרנו הוא שמרחם על מי שעבד אותנו, and therefore we should have mercy on something that served us, that did something for us. Even a, a waiter in a restaurant did something for you. Yeah? Yes, it's his job. But he helped you. He did something for you. So even though he got paid for his wages, you paid him for anybody, you should give him always something extra. Besides what was the condition to give to him with his wages. ודבר מושכל הוא, אין צורך להעריך בו. And this is understood, you don't have to talk about it. it be, just like God did it for us, you require to do it for anybody who you come in contact with and serves you in any manner. ונוהג את מצווה זו בזכרים ונקבות בזמן הבית. And this mitzvah is at the time of the temple. שאין דין עבד עברי נוהג עליו בזמן שהעבד נוהג, because there's no slavery now, because we don't have the temple now, so the whole concept of slavery doesn't exist now. ומכל מקום, אף בזמן נזווה, so even though, even in this time, ישמע חכף ויוסף לקח. Since you heard that it's a good attribute to do such a thing, and even though there's no slavery, you should learn something from it. שאם שכר אחד מבני ישראל, that if you... Um, that if you employed a Jew from a Jew, and this Jew served you for a long time, a year, two years, five years, ten years, whatever it is, or even a small time, page nine in the fourth paragraph, you should give to him when the, when the person goes out, says when he finishes his job for you, you should give to him from what God commanded you. And even though, just like the slave, if he didn't increase the value, even then you should increase to him. How much more so if he did increase the value? The Rebbe concludes, כדאי וראוי לעורר ולפרסם שיש לשים לב להוראה הבאה. The Rebbe says you have to pay attention, you have to publicize this thing. הסוחר אדם לעבוד אצלו והסתיימה תקופת עבודתו, if you Uh, hired someone to work for you and then he stopped working for you it ended the time and for sure if you fire him from his position because before the end of that allotted according to the agreement because now you have enough workers even if you're not happy with his work He doesn't do a good work. You still have to give him what? A gift. Even if you were not happy with his work, and that's why you're firing him. You still have to give him a gift. And since this gift is a concept of charity, it says, I gave you your wages, that's it, I don't owe you anything. 
That's not, that's not charity. Charity means above what you owe him. ברור שאת השכר שמגיע לו עבור עבודתו, that's for sure, the wages that he deserves because he's, because he's work, יש לשלם לו במלואו, that yet you have to pay him fully. אף התוספת שמעביד הבטיח מראש לתת לעובד, אינם נחשב חייב נקר. And even if you had an agreement from beforehand, you know what, when you leave me, I'm going to give you $10,000. Even that's not done. After you give him $10,000, give him five more. That's charity, because if that was part of the agreement that in the end you're going to give him $10,000, that's part of the wages. It's not extra. Because these additions are not considered to be charity. They're part of the wages, the part of the agreement you had with the person. So it does in this matter. It doesn't matter if he worked for you for 10 years, or when he worked for you for... Less than that. כלשון החינוך, זמן מרובה אפילו מועט. It says a long time, or even maybe five minutes, as a, serv- as a server in a restaurant that serves your food. He only worked for you for five minutes. Are you required to give him more than what is the wages required? Maybe yes. Can אין הבדל אם היה שבע רצו ממנו או לא? And it doesn't even matter if the guy did a good job, according to your opinion, he didn't do a good job. בין נתברך הבית בגללו ובין לא נתברך הבית בגללו, whether the house was blessed because of him, whether it wasn't, יש לתת לו הענקה, one has to give to him extra money, ביחס למשך הזמן שעבד, how much? according to the time that he worked for you, obviously when a person worked for you for five minutes, you know you're going to give him ten thousand dollars, but if a person worked for you for fifteen years, or ten years, maybe you should give him ten thousand dollars. על אחת כמה וכמה, so how much more so, כאשר נתברך הבית בגללו, when the house, you became very wealthy because of the servant, שאז ההלכה הוא לפי הברכה תן לו, according to the blessing, you just made a good deal, and you had a worker that was helping you in the deal, and you made a million dollars, yeah, you should give, you made a million dollars, give him something, yeah, how much, maybe a hundred thousand dollars, he helped you, without him you wouldn't have that million dollars. ויש להוסיף על ההנקה מאשר ברכו השם יתברך. So the more God blessed you in the business because of the slave, so you should have to pass it on to the slave himself.